Here we are. It's the 23rd of March, 2024, Saturday morning. Getting ready to go to the office. And I was going to make this video uh, two days ago, but we got snow again. So we're back to snow. Here we're actually supposed to have another big snowstorm coming today. I think the possibility of maybe 12 to 16 inches of snow or something. So <laughs> what a weird winter. But I'll, I'll put some... Uh, video in here why I couldn't do the video the other day. I'll show you some what it was looking like when we were driving to the office. You can see here. And uh, snowing pretty hard and pretty good blizzard there for a while. And I thought, well, I'll do the video later on when the snow stops. Well, then it was really windy. Real heavy winds and things and blowing the snow all around and everything. So didn't get a chance to do the video until now. But I um, want to make an observation, something I started thinking about the other day. Uh, I am an 1800s preacher stuck in the 21st century. Let me explain. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there was a song years ago I used to listen to, a country music song. I think the guy's name was David Lee Murphy, and he sang a song 100 years too late. It was about a cowboy that really doesn't fit into today's society and he does things the old-fashioned way and and you know he would have been you know another time and another place he might have rode with Jesse James you know um, I can't think of all the lyrics right now but the whole point is he was born a hundred years too late that's how he felt well for me I don't think that that would be appropriate I'm not born 100 years too late I'm born 200 years too late uh, I think I'd have fit in a lot better back in the 1800s. 1824 would have been a good year for me. 1924, you're starting to get into the Masonic infiltration of church buildings and with a lot of the Masonic uh, big preachers like Billy Sunday and Sam Jones, both were Freemasons. I think J. Frank Norris was as well. I can't confirm that one, but I think he was. There's a picture of him with his hand in the, you know, inside of his uh, suit jacket. And uh, he definitely ran with some uh, Masonic circles, you know, hang, hang, hanging out with the president and everything else and all these big heads of industry. So 100 years ago, eh, no, probably wouldn't have made it too good. And that's when a lot of the big Masonic built church buildings were happening around the country. But 200 years ago, 1824, yeah, I would have fit in back then. And uh, again, if you you know, I don't know if I've ever talked about this in my testimony, but when I first got saved, I was studying the lives of, you know, a lot of the preachers from the 1800s. Uh, D.L. Moody and and um, J. Wilbur Chapman, Peter Cartwright. Of course, Robert Sheffy was a big influence on me, the Sheffy movie. Um, and I did read the book, The Saint in the Wilderness. I have a copy of it by Jess Carr, the writer, biographer of... Uh, Robert Sheffy, and you know, it was a big influence to me, uh, men from the 1800s, and that's why a lot of the things I preach and teach um, are actually from the 1800s. Now, they're based on the scriptures, but you know, what I'm saying is back when those things were believed by the common man, um, back in the 18, we'll say 1824, uh, the stands that I take today would have been just normal back then because I learned from a lot of those guys. So, you know, I speak for biblical segregation, which is not based on hatred, it's based on preservation of culture. That's what they believed back then. I teach modest apparel, women should be wearing dresses. They taught that back then. Uh, no tattoos, obviously, back then. Um, no smartphones <laughs> back then. Uh, you know, just kind of an odd thing. And why does God have me here? Well, I saw that there was a video out there, um, just, you know, on YouTube, and it comes up, you might be interested in, you know, in the, the video feed, and, and there was a guy that did this video, and he said about how the, you know, don't be offended, or don't be ashamed, or whatever, um, because God made you for this time. Don't be upset about being in the end times, because you were made for this time. And I looked at the thing, and I thought... More than likely, the guy uses new versions, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I hate to watch videos by professing Christians on YouTube because they always let me down. Uh, 
and it's not you know there's some things i can have some differences of opinion and still say oh well you know somewhat of a blessing and whatever but you know a lot of them it's just terrible and i can't you know it's kind of you know i'm watching and it's sort of a yeah i don't agree with that and then i hear something else and pretty soon it's okay this guy's a total heretic lost well that's what happened with this video start watching it and this guy says you know it's such an exciting time to be alive as Christians and, and then how that we were made for this time. We are in the end times and, th and this is all about us. It's all about, you know, Jesus is coming soon and, and it's going to be this wonderful time. I mean, you read Matthew chapter 24 and you see our future there and I'm thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> I think we have a postie. Oh yeah, it was a postie. And uh, we're going to get to see all the events of Revelation and how wonderful it's going to be to see that. Uh, okay, except those days should be short and there should no flesh be saved. Uh, it's not going to be wonderful. Time of Jacob's trouble is not a wonderful time. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be a nightmare. But this guy, you know, oh, we're going to see this. And he said, and those of you out there, he said, don't ever fall for the pre-trib rapture lie. Don't ever fall for that. There's nothing more wicked, you know, kind of deal. With this pre-trib rapture lie is just terrible. It'll ruin you. <sighs> and, uh, it's so weird to me how people can hate the quote-unquote pre-trib rapture. It's actually called the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But, you know, the pre-trib rapture, uh, they'll say it's, it's a lie, it's terrible, it's horrible. Um, why would that be? Because it's a teaching that says that you get out before you have to suffer. Well, uh, point number one, um, real Christians do suffer right now. We suffer terribly. We have family members turn against us. We get fired from jobs. We have threats made on our lives. You know, the spiritual attacks that happen if you're truly saved. Um, yeah, uh, we don't have to look forward to suffering. That Someday we'll suffer really badly. We suffer right now. We're vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked. Uh, horribly vexed by the music and things of the world. Um, you know, there's times it just... Like I've said in other studies, there's times you're only... Uh, the only important thing for you to do in a day is sometimes just to survive, just to get through it because the spiritual attacks can be so bad at times as a Christian. And to say, you know, well, someday we'll have suffering. When the, when the tribula, great tribulation comes, that's when we'll have suffering. But until then, we're, we really have it easy. Well, I suggest you get born again then because, you know, the fact that you're not suffering tells me that you're lost. But that's point number one. They say, we're not suffering right now. And it'd be terrible to be taken out and whatever. Oh, you mean you have to be here to see things happen? You know, if you're a postie, you have to, your faith is going to be someday by sight. I have to see the events of, of the book of Revelation. No, um, actually the Jews require a sign. All right. The Jews are the ones that the book of Revelation is for. Saw recently there was this whole thing of uh, Joe Rogan, that filthy, disgusting pervert that he is. A filthy, foul-mouthed, low birth, low class, just moron. And he comes out and he's, oh, I just wish Jesus would come, maybe before the election. Oh, honey bunches, you don't want to see Jesus Christ. Not in your present condition. You repent, you come to God as a sinner, broken sinner. You say, God, change me, God, save me. Okay, maybe then you'd like to see Jesus. But as a filthy, rotten, foul-mouthed, just destroyer of American manhood, turning them into just animals, just brute beasts. Uh, they just use the F word every, you know, every sentence. You have to insert it somewhere in a sentence to, to make yourself look intelligent. Um, and this, this filthy pervert, I just hope Jesus comes back. <laughs> uh, like this Jesus guy is going to come back and just say, I'm here to unite the world. I'm here out of love or something with his white robe with his blue sash on or something. No, 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 no. That's a Roman Catholic uh, satanic corruption. Um, Jesus Christ, when he comes back, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. I remember seeing a video the one time of these lions over in Africa and they got a Cape Buffalo down there just ripping the Cape Buffalo's guts out and the buffalo's going, oh, you know, horrible pain and these lions are like, you're just ripping the meat out you know blood all over their fur all over their mane just dripping with blood I'm just eating this buffalo while it's still alive that's a picture of Jesus Christ when he comes back 
He said, well, except for the blood thing. Oh, oh no, no. Read Revelation chapter 19. Jesus Christ comes back and he kills the 200 million man army. The Battle of Armageddon. And uh, he rides down through the blood and we follow him. Riding down through all those dead bodies. Just Bible talks about in the Old Testament about how he comes back and there's blood on his garments. Just riding through the blood of the wicked. Uh, that's Jesus when he comes back. Um, something that uh, Joe Rogan and his ilk cannot fathom that the loving sweet Jesus would come back that way and be so horrible and mean spirited or something but uh, you say well Brian now that you've now that you've accepted the problem that you have you are stuck in a time period in the past you're a Luddite or something you know you, you don't like technology you're afraid of new technologies and and you have these other issues about you now that you've come to that realization, are you going to make an effort to change? Uh, yeah, I think that's the time has come for me to change. I'm going to get even more radical. <laughs> uh, all this stuff that they're coming out with, you know, we're going to make EV mandates. You know, we're going to have, you have to drive an electric vehicle and by 2030, you have to have an electric vehicle. No, no. What are you going to do, brother? Are you going to try to produce your own gasoline or something? No, if it comes to the point where it's a electric vehicle or or else, you know, that's the only thing available, um, I'll go back to horses. I'll get a horse. You say you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Well, you're going to become Amish. Uh, I'm not going to become Amish. Uh, please don't insult me. I'm not going to become some work salvationist, backward, inbred, you know, pervert. And I'm not being... Uh, insulting there just with a whatever no there's there's inbreeding that goes on um, my house that I grew up at 60 Peach Lane Ronks PA uh, is where I grew up that was my address growing up and um, our house was here up in the woods you go down through the fields there was a farm down there you keep going down through the fields to Iva Road and there was a Amish house there and they were all um, all physically deformed and it was through in inbreeding um, I remember being at an Amish business the one time in Gordonville PA and this Amish guy comes walking in and he's all hunched over and he's uh, saying things and, and you know his drool coming out and he's you know his eyes are all crooked and inbred inbreeding there was a weird Amish guy walking around doing weird things before you know the one time when I was growing up and you know get in the house this, this weird Amish guy's out and uh, his family's trying to get him back in. They they kept him locked in an upper room. Oh man, that's stuff that goes on in the Amish community. I mean, give me a break. Um, you know, and, and again, oh, it goes on in other places too and things. Sure, of course it does, but with the Amish, they're supposedly this holy righteous people that they're separated from the world and <laughs> no, they're not. Smyrna compound up that way. Um, there's a Amish guy that I knew up there, Jonas Yoder, and he was telling me, he said, yeah, he said, you know, there's, there's some perversion here in our, in our group. And he said, one of the, one of the brethren, he said, yeah, he was, you know, had some problems with his one daughter and there was a little bit of molestation and things that we're trying to work that out and none of us are perfect. And, uh, and the, so, uh, no, don't ever call me Amish. If you haven't seen my videos on the Amish cult, then you really should watch them. If you're deceived and thinking that they're great, they're not great people. Uh, well, they live just like they did in the 1800s. No, they don't. <laughs> I remember uh, being on the Strasburg Railroad. Used to work on there as a cook. And uh, back when I was a teenager, and down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, if you don't know where that's at, you can Google it. And I remember we were there and, and the, the guy doing the, they had, you know, speakers and then the guy would do this little speech and, you know, and, and he'd say about, he was saying about uh, most of the farms that you see here are, you know, the Amish people. The Amish people are simple people. They live much the way that our ancestors did in the 1800s and, and whatever else. And, and they uh, do things without power and without electricity. And we're trying, we're going along in a train and looking down, there's this, they're, uh, they're building this barn. At one of the farms there, right, right along Cherry Hill Road or something, was one of the roads that intersected the train tracks. And there's this Amish guy. He's up on top of the barn, and he's dialing with his cell phone. 
He's one like this talking on his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they live much like they did in the 1800s. Yeah, what about that one? You know, this Amish construction guy. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, never mind that truck that's there with the, you know, Amish construction crew. You know, that's just one of the the young Amish men that hasn't been baptized into the church yet. Uh, you know, and he's driving the truck for the rest of the Amish crew so that they can make the money. We just won't talk about that. Uh huh. <laughs> so, uh,. No, I'm not going to become Amish, but uh, I'm going to stand by the old things, the old ways, um, because it's right. Uh, Ask for the old paths, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Jeremiah chapter 6 talks about that. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it, the old paths are where you find rest. The old ways of doing things. 1824 would have been a good year. Uh, a lot of the things I have to preach against um, wouldn't have even been an issue back then. Not even an issue. What a wonderful time to be alive. But um, I'm just going to be contrary to this modern world. And uh, I'm going to fight against it. I'm not going to say, well, you know, I'll just kind of conform to the modern way of things. And, you know, the Bible says, meddle not with them that are given to change. Uh, okay, I take that as a serious thing. I'm not going to do that. So... Let me see my little booklet here. I think I covered all my points. Oh, another thing. Um, my hymns that I like. Uh, there's a lot of hymns that are written hundreds of years ago, and I still like to sing them. They still mean something to me today. Uh, again, my, my very favorite songs, the ones that I love the most, many go back to the early 1800s, some even older. Um... Well, why don't we update that? Why don't we have a new Bible and a new new hymns and things? No, I like the old ones. See no reason to change. So, <laughs> wanted to put that out there. And speaking of hymns, I'm going to be having a video coming out with uh, talking about some lyrics to some hymns. And it uh, should be a very interesting study. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm working on that. And... Uh, we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be heading to the office. Um, just a little update there as far as the power outlet that burned out and everything. I haven't had a chance to fix that yet um, because I'm transitioning my office away from the one room to another room. And then I'm going to be moving my wife into my old office and we have to get the books out of there. And it's a whole lot of work. Well, one of the things I needed was an Ethernet cable to go from where the modem and router and all that stuff is to go over to the, where the new office is. Well, I had an old one, and uh, I was thinking it was going to be long enough. Well, I threaded it down through the floor, down and through the basement, up along underneath all the, you know, the floor joists and things, and along through, and I got it up there, and it was about eight feet too short from where I needed it to be to go up to the new desk in the new office. And so, you know, so then I had to, order another one I ordered a new one yesterday and um, so <laughs> we have that to deal with and uh, I'll be updating some other things in the future too but just to let people know about that where it's still in process again you know I spend a couple hours now every day with Oliver teaching him things history type lessons um, teaching him about the Bible about the Bible version issue we actually watched my documentary, my old documentary, Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. We watched that. I stayed up the other night uh, about an hour and a half later than I normally would because Oliver was asking questions about the Bible. And when was the first new version? When did that come in, Father? And I told him, and oh, that's interesting. And what about this? And what about that? Asking some really good questions. So uh, that's where a lot of my day goes to. Um, so, but anyhow, we're getting ready to go here. Need to get going. And, uh, but just thank you to everybody out there again for your prayers. Thank you for your support of the ministry. Thank you for your kind words of encouragement. That means a lot to us. And um, some really good stuff coming up. Again, I have some, some uh, plans to put more written material out. I'll be talking more about that in the future. I have it started, but I'm trying to get to it uh <laughs> just tell you a little funny story um 
we have an old table, old kitchen table that came with our office when we bought it. And that's where I currently have my computer set up, you know, and connected to the internet with a wire that's ethernet cable that goes through my wife's office over into the kitchen on the kitchen table. Well, the other morning I was there, I wanted to show both my wife and Oliver something. And so they came in, they were looking and they both were leaning on the kitchen table and this old kitchen table, the leg came out of the, like the post coming down and the whole table started falling over and grabbing it and my monitors are falling down. And so I had to, to rig that thing, get it situated back up. So, you know, not a big deal. It's not, you know, an attack of the devil or something. No, it's just something that takes me more time. It's just life. That's what it is. But, you know, you just do your best, brethren. I do my best to the best of my abilities. I try to remain faithful to the Lord. That's all we can do. So just be encouraged by that little story there. Uh, chaotic things and, and whatever else, uh, they come into your life. And the Lord, he understands when you go through that. And uh, just be faithful to him and, and um, stay with it. Don't get too discouraged by this world and by the daily things that you have to do that come into your life that seem to sidetrack you from what you want to do sometimes. So that will be it. See you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.